to the cloud. All right, so your faces are on if you want. If you don't want, that's okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Oh, does anyone take, want to take care of the doorbell for me, please? Anyone? I will, Susie. Thank you, Liz. I'm going to make you a co-host. Woohoo! I feel so excited. Do I need I a ball gown? The, uh, <laughs> you're going to get a three second training. So when the doorbell rings, you admit and then they'll come in. Oh, totally, totally. Brilliant. All right. Thank you. And then if anything comes up in the chat, just somebody interrupt me. This is not a very big group. If it gets to be huge, then maybe one of you will step up, step up. But um, let me go ahead and get started. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go off of that. See if I get in it and go to here. We are on our last day of blended learning um, PD, so I actually have made this slideshow easier for me. You guys won't see much of a difference on your end, but today um, I love spreadsheets. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's one of the first skills that I learned. I started learning how to use computers when I was a secretary because when I got out of high school, I, um, I didn't think I was smart enough for college, so I started working as a travel agent, and um, you can't afford to be a travel agent <laughs> if you want to have, you know, a life, so I became a secretary, and one of the first things I learned how to use was spreadsheets, so I was using them way back in the dark ages, so as technology has evolved, so has my ability to use them, so I've used Excel, I've used Google Sheets. Um, they all have pretty much the same premise and the same abilities. Google Sheets is not as powerful as Excel, but for 90%, 99% of what I do with spreadsheets, I don't need that extra power of Excel. And from time to time, I've taken classes to teach me more power. And if you don't use it, you lose it. So if there are like really crazy questions that you have and I've forgotten how to do it, I may have to get back to you on that. But for the basics, we're going to be able to do that. So I'm first going to share a video with you. I was trying to find a video to share, and I wanted it to be fun because I love spreadsheets. So literally, I went to YouTube, and I typed in, spreadsheets are awesome. That was my search string, which is not a really effective one, but it was for me. So I'm going to go ahead and share this video with you. And I had to use like a tube chop to be able to chop it down and make it the right size. So here we go. Oh, it's loud. Can you guys hear it? Thumbs up? No. <laughs> You're all so um, polite. <laughs> all right. That's because I didn't check the darn boxes when I hit share. I did hit share, right? Yes, I did. I couldn't find the stop share. Okay. Yep, I didn't click the, the boxes. There we go. I've only done this 24 times. Okay, let's try this again. And share, and let's rewind this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but would you believe and it still didn't, I'm just going to pause for a second here because I tried to tube chop, you know, chop this down to the four or so minutes that it is, four and a half minutes, and it's still showing 13. But Ladies and gentlemen, stand up and Matt Parker! All right, we're now going to blow this whole what is a nerd debate clean out of the water when I show you my all-time favorite. We are talking absolute number one here, top favorite spreadsheet. And the, <laughs> some of you may have your own favorite spreadsheets, I don't know. Uh, but would you believe there are some people out there who don't use spreadsheets recreationally? And I, I'm astounded at this. Apparently, there are people who say spreadsheets are just for work, right? People who say, yes, if you're in the office, then spreadsheets are great because you know you can... You can add numbers up, you can take averages, you can grab a table and just pivot that shit. But, the 
those same people, when they go home after work, they don't turn to a spreadsheet or two to help them to relax. And I think that's outrageous. So I have a campaign to change people's minds about spreadsheets. Now, while the vast majority of you are with me, I suspect there may be a few people here tonight who bought tickets because we have advertised this as a comedy show. <laughs> People may be concerned that me talking about spreadsheets is not going to be a world of column-to-column -column hilarity. And so, to avoid that problem, I have written, and I will perform for you tonight, somewhere between zero and a whole joke. <laughs> okay, that was not all of you. That's fine. A lot of you are now worried this joke is a waste of valuable spreadsheet time. Uh, and it's okay, I've minimised the impact. Were you to imagine my talk about spreadsheets as a graph of the amount of joke over time, there will just be the one sudden spike in the otherwise background level of joke. And so, the spreadsheet in question, my number one spreadsheet, is this one here. And what I have done is I have gone through and I've put lots of numbers between 0 and 255 into a spreadsheet. And then, so you get a sense of where the large and small values are, I've used conditional formatting. So the larger the number in each cell, the brighter the background colour gets, right? And so, uh, oh, in fact, if I change one of these, you'll see the background colour changes with it. So if I increase this to 100, the green gets a little bit brighter. If we go up to 200, it gets much brighter. And then 255, the largest value in the cell, uh, sorry, in the entire spreadsheet, is full green. Zero is completely black. And here we have every other whole number shade in between. And I'm not just done this for one colour. As you can see, the rows go red, green, blue, red, green, blue. And that carries on for the approximately 1,000 rows in this spreadsheet. Oh. Susie, we're not able to hear that. Susie, since you left, it uh, hasn't had any voice. Is that working or no? Sorry. Sometimes working in my office, I'm great at hiding, but other times I'm not. Hang on. Because I don't want you to miss this. <laughs> we'll go back to his big numbers and small numbers. Oh, that's quite the face. All right. Let me double check my audio settings. The speaker should be that, AirPods for that. I think it's also because I hit mute. All right, let's try again. Give me thumbs up or thumbs down on hearing him. You can't hear him. What? No. Crud, let's see. All right, let me take the AirPods up. And let me go to here, same as system, same as system, let's try. Yes. <laughs> now at this point, a few of you are thinking. Oh sure, no, I thinking, can't hear it either. You can why? hear it? <laughs> <laughs> why have you done this? You can, great, I can't why hear anything. Why are we hearing about it on a Saturday night? <laughs> well, no, actually I did, I heard a Oh my gosh. You know what I'm doing? My only advice. I'm going to close my door first of all, because knowing my luck, knowing my luck, I'm going to get this set and then somebody else is going to walk in.
Okay. It's hard to listen to a comedian and get interrupted. If I hit play here, and I'm gonna take these off and put them away. Give me a second. I don't even know if you can hear me or him. There's that. I already know what I'm doing. My only right. advice now. is for now, All right. just remain calm. <laughs> Right, because we have a long way to go with this spreadsheet. If you get too excited now, you're not going to leave yourself the emotional room to move later on. In fact, I would recommend, initially, on a scale of zero to being really freaking excited, hopping around about a third of the way up, right? Because what we're going to do is start to zoom out so you can see more of the spreadsheet at once. If we come one step back, you can start to see there's some structure to where the large and small numbers are, right? And if we come a second step further out, you see that the numbers mean that the formatting makes a picture of someone's face. <laughs> Look at that. That someone's eyes made entirely out of numbers. So good. <laughs> In fact, if you zoom out again, you can see this is a spreadsheet of a picture of me. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I have really excelled myself. <laughs> I sense I'm being patronized. <laughs> it's fine, technically a joke. I can log it in my spreadsheets. <laughs> there we go. Right, so, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, wow, that was painful. All right, I'm not gonna put my headphones back in because I don't wanna have to worry about the sound again. Um, I'm going to go back here, which I actually don't have to do. So I'm going to go, um, give me one second. I know that there was a, no, it won't do it. I thought that there was a pause share. I was looking at this um, the other day in Zoom, because as a teacher, once in a while, you want to be able to like wait till you show them something on your screen, and I could stop sharing and then fix it and then put it up, which is what I'm going to do. But I thought there was, there is a, oh no, that's a pause recording which at this point, we're just gonna keep recording anyway. But what I wanna be able to do before I pull up this spreadsheet is just, um, I'm trying to hide the students' names, that's all. And I can do that pretty quickly, knowing that this is recorded. And so I'm using a spreadsheet, a real one, that kind of displays the, the effectiveness of using it for organization. And so that's why I want to make sure that I have just blocked them out. And I was doing it 42 minutes ago, but I've gotten interrupted 77 times. <laughs> and then let me just do this. Sorry, people. You're like, this is the best class she's given so far. I know. I know. Okay. So I'm going to open up um, sharing my screen again, and I'm going to go over some real basics first, just in case you're a spreadsheet newbie. I certainly don't want to gallop ahead of you and then have you say, wow, that, our spreadsheets aren't that great. Um, if you have questions, there's a chat there. I don't, did not see it. The sound stopped. Thank you for letting me know. If you have questions, please interrupt me, because otherwise I just feel like I'm talking to myself. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go to Google Sheets, which is the Google version of basically an Excel spreadsheet, same idea. Um, so I'm going to do sheets, sheets.new. It will open up a new blank spreadsheet full of possibilities. So I'm just going to name this one plain so that I can find it later. All right. So when you're working in a spreadsheet, in a spreadsheet, you are working in a grid made up of cells. That's what all of these little rectangles are. He said that in his video anyway, but these are all cells that can hold any type of information. It can hold text, it can hold formulas, it can hold numbers, it can hold all kinds of stuff. 
and then it's organized by rows which go down and columns which go across. Columns hold up buildings, they go up and down, so columns go up and down in a spreadsheet as well. And every cell, which the one thing about um, Google Sheets that is different than Excel, it, and if you haven't used either, then it doesn't matter, but in Excel, each cell has what we call an address. So right now I'm in cell B3 because I'm in column B in row three. So that address for that cell would be B3. In Excel, you would actually see that address. It would pop up so you could see it. But here in Google Sheets, you just have to know that that's the address of that cell. And cells can be, like I said, filled with numbers. So if I wanted to do this one is one and the one below it is two, I'm using my enter button. Your enter, your arrows, and your tab key come in handy a lot in a spreadsheet to navigate around instead of trying to move and click and move and click, move and click. But the good thing about spreadsheets is that they can be pretty smart. I'm going to put a couple of numbers in here. So if I'm doing a series of numbers, in this case, you're all going to predict what number is going to go under here, which is the number four. But the spreadsheet knows that too. If I first show it, basically what I want it to see. So I am highlighting all three numbers in my series and I'm saying, yo, spreadsheet, I have a little pattern here. Can you follow it? And it takes that pattern and I'm going to grab this little tiny box in the right hand corner and I'm going to pull it down and it's going to continue that pattern. If my pattern was a AB pattern, I just have to set up the beginning of it highlight it to show the spreadsheet, yo, here's a pattern, and then I can bring it down with that same little box in the corner, and when I let go, I lied. It did not do what I wanted it to do unless I didn't have my pattern correct. So let's get rid of that. <laughs> I'm having quite the day. Why did it not do that? I'm gonna skip it for now rather than try and mess it up again. Um, if I want the same number again, this one will work. If I want the same number and I don't want it to increase, I can do it this way. Oh, I know what I meant to do for, oops, uh, four, six, eight. Now it should behave itself. It should count by twos. <laughs> You're like, I'm so glad this is happening to her. Why did I do that? Okay, I'm still. It's counting by twos. I think you must have a formula or something that in there already. Yeah. Like it's not a blank. It's a brand new blank one, but we'll leave it just as it is like that. I'll still agonize over that for the rest of the day. Um, I didn't get rid of that one. Maybe it's because you put a one to counting by twos. So instead of starting at one, start at two. You do two to four. Let's try. All my helpers. Ah, oh, there we go. So yes, it didn't like my one, but it did sense the pattern and off it went. Thank you. Was that Caitlin? I'm starting to know voices too. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, your spreadsheet can also do math, so you can highlight a series of numbers and you can then have the computer figure it out. There's a few different ways that you can do that. You can go up to your um, toolbar up here that has all the little symbols until you get over here to the one that has the big um, Greek E on it that says functions. And when you click on it, you get a whole plethora of options from your very basic, like sum, to things that are wicked complex that you might want to use later. But at its, at its basic level, I could click sum, and it's going to put the formula below it. Every formula in Google Sheets or Excel has to start with an equal sign. That's kind of a trigger for your spreadsheet to know that it's getting ready to do some math or do some work. So in this case, we are sh telling the computer, the equal sign says open your formula. We're gonna figure out a sum of a range of cells. The range of cells you can see are in parentheses. So you're basically speaking almost another language to tell your spreadsheet to be able to do that. So when I hit the enter key on my keyboard or return key, it will then plug in that number. So 55 is the sum of all of those numbers in that series. If I also, let me get rid of my 20 and get rid of my 22. If I also wanted to create the sum of all of these numbers, I could do the same thing. I could highlight it. I could go up to my little functions 
menu and I could hit sum again, or I could be a big girl and I could type it all by myself. I could type in equal sum, open parentheses, highlight the files, close parentheses, enter. That's the big girl way of doing it from scratch. Or I know that this cell here that we just did a minute or so ago already has the formula that I want for this column. Well, if I wanted to do the same thing in this column, basically all I have to do is copy this cell over to the one to the right. So I'm gonna go back to this little square that's in the corner of the cell and drag it to the right. And it's gonna copy that formula, which you can see when I click on the cell up here in the formula bar, you can see that it's the same formula, but it's changed from column B, B3 to B12. In this one, it's C3 to C12. I could do the same thing here. I could actually stretch it all the way over if I wanted to. I could stretch it all the way over to here. And right now there's no numbers in here, but I could put like three, seven, whatever, two, whatever, and it will automatically add it. So there's no need to have to do the same formula over and over again if you're doing some type of chart all the way across. Um, let's see. The other things that you can do with it also, it will know some other series as well. So if I do January, February, March, and then I highlight those three and I drag it down, it's going to know that I want that. It will do the same thing for Monday, Tuesday, and I believe, there we go, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, it did do it. So it will then continue that pattern as well. So there's a lot of like smartness that's hidden behind a spreadsheet. My husband, like I said, he, when I got home last night, he's been deciding to run a football pool because a lot of restaurants are not running them this fall. So he's decided to run one. And when I first met him 30 years ago, he knew how to use a spreadsheet on, you know, the ancient computers that were probably bigger than us. But since then he hasn't used one. So that'll be my weekend teaching him how to use it. So he's going to use it for recreational purposes because he's want to, going to want to keep track of the people that are in the pool, the dates of the game. So let's say, you know, the date this weekend is the 13th, um, 9-13, oops. Oops, my fingers are on the key, wrong keys, 9, 13, 20. And then he would end up putting in whatever their picks are or whatever their point choices are or whatever it is. He's going to be able to create all of this in a spreadsheet. So it's a way for him to organize all of those picks. And then he'll be able to share that with the people that are in the pool so they'll be able to see who else has picked what. So a spreadsheet is great to be able to organize stuff as well. Um, you can also format just like you do in a regular document. So I know I didn't put capitals on these letters, but I can still bold them. I can still change the font. I can still change the font size. I can still format if it's centered or whatever it is that you want to be able to do with that. I can also decide if I want to put borders around my cells. This little picture frame here gives you all kinds of choices. This one will put it on all of them. This will put it um, in the, like the, the middle of each one to the right of each one in this case. Um, you could have it do it just on the bottom of the whole selection. Usually people will use the one that does it for all of them. You can also change the thickness or the border color of your borders. So you can make it beautiful. That's entirely up to you as to how you want to be able to make your spreadsheet look that um, I always suggest kind of doing all of the work first before you make it look beautiful. Always bake the cake before you put the frosting on. It makes it a lot easier because that way you know what you're dealing with for, um, for all of your data and your information that's in there. You can also add additional sheets. So in this case, I'm in what we call sheet one, which is just the way that it comes up when you open a brand new one, but I can change the name to it, change the name of it. I can rename it to, we are playing with numbers in this one. But then let's say I wanted to be able to create another one. I can hit the plus sign. It opens up a new blank sheet. I can rename this one to, you know, playing more, whatever it is that you wanna be able to save it as. Um, and that comes in handy later. I'll be able to show you an example of that, being able to add secondary tabs. 
any questions so far? I don't. I didn't ask anyone specific to watch the chat, but if you see something come up or if you have a question, either interrupt me or, or interrupt me. Susie, um, I have a question. Does that filling across thing work with dates too? It can, yes. Um, I believe that this one's probably going to go up by one day. Yeah, so it's going up by one day. If I were to do, let's see, 9, 13, 20, and then I want to do, what's a week from the 13th? The 20th. Thank you. I am not great at calendar math. 9, 20, 20. Let's see if I highlight both and I drag it if it'll do a weekly thing. It does. Nice. Okay. Yep. So it's just a matter of playing with it. If you find that you're doing anything redundant over and over and over and over again in a spreadsheet, chances are there's a more efficient way to do it. Um, and I would spend only a certain period of time trying to figure out what that is until your search for a new solution becomes as <laughs> time worthy as or time consuming as the actual redundancy. So just know that some things it can be doing more effectively and some that it doesn't. Um, any other questions so far? I don't know if all of you know this because I'm, I'm not positive, but if I were to go here, no, let me do it this way. Um, if I go here. So this is the form that we used when students were returning their Chromebooks. So when you create a Google form, you're basically creating the fields for data to be housed in a spreadsheet. You can, once you have your results, I don't know if I'm in the actual results of this one, I have, need to move myself out of here. I didn't pick a form that I made. I picked a form that somebody else made. That's awesome, forms.google.com. I'm going into my list of forms just to be able to show an example. Um, There we go. So this is what we're using for our loaner program this year. And when people fill in this form, they're basically giving you the data that you need to be able to fill out a spreadsheet. So when you go to responses, they will all come in here. You'll have 72 responses, or in this case, we're nearing on like 500 in a day. Um, the responses down here, you can look at what the results are. But the best way usually to be able to see your results is to go into the spreadsheet that it automatically makes. I didn't want to bring you into the live spreadsheet because it has a lot of student names in it. But this one here, and I had to cover up, let me actually scroll down. I'm going to delete these two just because I tried hiding them, but I was rushing. I was rushing. Right click and delete columns so that should pop them up. What do you mean? You cannot delete the columns with form data. All right, I'll hide them then. Hide columns. All right, there we go. So now you've seen, <laughs> I've gone in, I've changed it all to fake email address and I've gotten rid of their name so that you can see the spreadsheet. So basically what's coming in is whether or not the student is in a Falcon or a Mashpee cohort, what grade level they're in and whether or not they have a Chromebook or a charger. So this spreadsheet is growing by the minute. No longer are we in the live spreadsheet, but I believe that we're well over 300 responses, um, 400. Oh, I was right, close to 500. So what's nice about having the Google form is that it starts all of the data collection. So you don't have to type all of that in. And then you can sort it by ways that are more useful just because the data comes in in a certain order, like right now we have it mostly organized by date order, which all I have to do is go up here to the column header and this tiny little triangle will let me sort the sheet A to Z by this column. So now they are in the order that they were received. So if you're doing something, you know, first come first serve, you could do that. Or you could order it by last name if all of these names were you know actual last names i could sort it by last name or i could sort it by grade level and even though alphabetically numbers aren't alphabetical what it will do is it will kind of alphabetize them together so in this case it put all of the ones together so 11 comes before 12 
alphabetically. <laughs> and then it goes into the K. We have a, oh, wait a minute, I have to go back up. Did I do it backwards? Oh, there, never mind. It did it. We have ones at the top, then grade two, and then it goes into the one zeros, one ones, ones twos. So the organization can be that way. For us, the organization is going to be about whether or not you have a Chromebook. So sorting it by no, I don't have a Chromebook or yes, I do have a Chromebook is going to be hugely helpful to us as we figure out how to get all these people their Chromebooks. Um, so a spreadsheet makes things much more usable. Sometimes what I'll do is I will make my own copy of it if I know I'm gonna fuss around with the columns a lot. If I'm sharing the spreadsheet, like the actual live spreadsheet, there's about five or six of us in there and I don't wanna be messing up with columns and maybe moving things around on somebody else's view. So I like to sometimes make my own copy so I can fuss around with it. But you can always hit the undo button. The control Z will always put it back into the state that it was in right before you did it or you can come up to five and do, un where did the undo go? Susie. Susie, Susie, Susie. Why does it not say undo? The undo button's here, Never mind. <laughs> there it is. I knew it was at the top. Um, and then also, I feel like I'm jumping around a lot, but um, the other thing that you can do, let's say you have a spreadsheet and it's growing by acres like this one is, you can also freeze headers or rows across the top or you can freeze columns down the side. So right now, this one's already frozen. I'm going to actually unfreeze it so you can see why you would want it frozen. So right now I have my headers at the top that came from the questions in the Google form. But if I scroll up and down, I lose those headers. So by the time I get down here, I might forget what, what some of these columns are. Like, is this a score of nine? This is grade nine, what's this column? So I would wanna click on the row that I wanna freeze, or if there's more than one, I can click on the row down that I wanna freeze up until and then you go up to view and you can go to freeze and then you can decide are you going to freeze no rows which is what we have right now the first row the second first and second row are up to the current row that you're in so if i'm in row 10 it could freeze up to row 10 but i'm going to do just the first row and so now when i scroll up and down my top row doesn't move which is awesome Sometimes you wanna do that for names too. If you have names down the left-hand side, or e in this case, email addresses, let's say I always want that to be viewable. In this spreadsheet, I probably want it to be frozen all the way over to last name. So I again would go up to view, down to freeze, and now I come down here to the column section and I do up to column C. So now when I scroll right and left, and I'm just using two fingers on my keypad, these three columns stay put the top row stays put, and then I can just move around the extra stuff. Makes it a lot easier in a large spreadsheet. The bigger the spreadsheet, the more efficient you want to be able to use it, and freezing those rows is hugely helpful to do that. How's everybody doing? Okay. Another thing that you can do, if I go into, let me try it this way. This is probably my biggest spreadsheet that I use all the time. Here, why is it not coming up? Oh, there it is. Okay, so this spreadsheet, I gotta move your little faces out of the way. Um, you can see way down the bottom here, if nothing's in the way on your screen, that these tabs at the bottom go all the way back to when I first started here. So I can click on a tab and go back to 2015 and any type of information that came in. So this particular Google form that was used asked for um, the student to sign in and put their name, their grade level, their school, their email address. I added in the column about, because I wanted to know if there was more breaks with um, the young ladies in our district or the gentlemen. Um, some of these columns I entered after 
The spreadsheet was built from the Google form and you can do that. It will continue to work. The original Google form will continue to take that type of data in, but then you have places to add your own notes, your own data. So it was a way for us to be able to keep track of what breaks were or what devices were having warranty issues so that we could return them to the manufacturer. So again, all of this is more because I said that this is an organization class, not so much like how do you use a spreadsheet to do your budget, more or less how to keep track of information over time. And because I keep using the same exact file, the same spreadsheet, and I just keep adding tabs every year, I don't even know if I've added this year yet, no, I haven't yet. Um, I'll have to do that because I can then take everything that's on the form responses, which is that very first call, that very first sheet. I can copy all of this and then I can move it to a new blank tab and then it will start to fill in the new ones. They're probably in here at the bottom. Anything new, yeah, the 20s are in here. So I have some cleaning up to do, but you can definitely just keep adding new tabs at the bottom to be able to add in new information. It just keeps all of your information in one place and it makes it a lot easier. You can also use Google Sheets. Let me go back to this one, this amazing one. So none of this data makes sense. But if I highlight a table that I've made, and like I said, this one makes no sense at all. So I'm not sure what it's going to do, but we'll find out. Um, when you highlight something that you've created when it comes to like a math data section of your spreadsheet and then you come over to this explore button here. I know a lot of people haven't used the explore button. They haven't explored the explore button. What Google Sheets is going to try and do is it's going to try and make sense of your data and it's going to give you some formatting options. It's going to give you some options for um, charts and graphs that maybe will match your needs when it comes to your spreadsheet. So in this case, our spreadsheet means nothing. So most of these graphs are like useless. But if it were normal data, I'd be like, yeah, that totally, this scatter plot totally shows what I'm trying to show. Or this one shows breakage over time. Whatever it is, you can then click on it and drag it right into your spreadsheet. Or you can drag this and put it like copy and paste it into a Google Doc or into a Google Slide. It's a way for you to be able to take your data and then put it into a more visualized manner. Again, my data makes absolutely no sense. But once it's created, you can go in and you can tweak some of the settings on it. You can um, move it to its own sheet. You can get rid of it. You can edit it. If I go to edit, it's now giving me some options like what my data range is, which it was what I highlighted in the first place. If I want to be able to change the labels for, on the sides, like right now, it's showing dates. I can change those to words. There's a lot of little um, items that you can shop for in there. You can change the type of graph that it's showing and there's a lot of them and you all know from using math or using spread not using spreadsheets but some data is better displayed in some types of charts so you can play around with that. I believe you can change the color on a lot of these. Um, your chart style whether or not you're using here's your legend what's in it what type of font you're using like you can go cray cray trying to design what it is that you've created. Um, so at its most basic, it's very useful just clicking that explore and being able to find something that works for your data. But if you need to go deeper, make it super customized for your needs, then it will go deeper for you as well. How are we doing? 1045. Susie, on that one, once you've created the chart, will it live update if the data fields change it or will. do you have to go and recreate it? No, it will. It will. So if I change, let's change July to a thousand. I don't know. Yep, there it goes. So it'll it'll definitely stay connected to it. What I'll often do is I'll create a second tab on my spreadsheet. Sorry, your all of our faces are in the way. Um, I would create a second tab and then you know name it maybe charts. So I could save them in there. I do rename 
charts. And then I come back to where I made my chart and I click it and I copy it. And then I go into charts and then I vomit it. And then I go back. I always with, I don't, I don't know if it's a superstition for me, but um, generally in sheets, I don't do cut and paste. I do copy and paste and then I go back and delete. Just because I, I, so much work goes into a spreadsheet that I don't ever want to lose anything. I don't know if it's just because I've been using them for so many years. So now I know I can delete this one because I know it's living in here and I don't have to worry about it disappearing on me. That's just my own um, idiosyncrasy when it comes to using a spreadsheet, but that's just an option. You can also then glue it into um, a Google Doc, what have you. Question. And will that still update between tabs? I knew you were going to ask that. Oh, yeah, it would definitely update between tabs. So if I go back to playing and I go back to playing numbers and let's change this one to 2200, zero, zero, enter, and I go back to charts, there it is. And I don't know if in a doc.new, I don't know if that's going to connect. Vomit. So no, it vomited the, um, the original that I did. So if you're going to put it into a Google Doc, like for a presentation, you know, to show the school committee, whatever it is, um, then you'd want to make sure it's your finished product. That's why if you have it in a second tab here in your spreadsheet, it will continually update. So then when you're finally ready to glue it in somewhere like a website or where have you, um, it will do so. You might be able to put it into a Google site and it might auto update. Um, so Google talks to Google except for when it doesn't. So you just have to figure out where it is going to work and where it isn't. And can I ask another question? Yes, please do. All right. So I'm, I'm thinking of, so at QuashNet, right, we have spreadsheets where we have the list of all the kids in fifth grade and then individual tabs of kids in individual classrooms. So an update gets made on they've switched from Mashpee week to Falcon week. Do you have to change it on both? Or is there a way for it to change just on the master and it automatically changes on the classes? There is. You have to do basically a reference from one sheet to the other or one tab to the other. So let me think about the best way to do this. I'm going to take and... And if it's not relevant to other people, you can... No, it's a great question. It's a great question. Let me vomit that same chart in here. So let's say right now I were to go into, this is the original, and I were to change this one to, let's say, 3,000. But I go to where I just vomited it into the third tab. It does not update it because it doesn't know right now to keep its eye on that first tab. So I would have to go in here, and I might do it wrong off the top of my head, but it's definitely a formula so you need the equal sign and you're going to be referencing that cell so you have to click on that tab you have to click on that cell why is it doing that playing more yeah playing more b2 i'd have to do it i'd have to do it without an audience <laughs> Yes, you that's, can. That's okay. That's good to know that they exist, but then that, does that have to be done for each cell versus an entire table? Um, once you do it for one cell, you drag that formula down, just like we drag down for, you know, the sum. Okay. So once you figure it out in one cell, you can drag it down. I think I need parentheses in there, but you're basically doing a reference from one cell to another in another sheet. Like, hey, keep an eye on that cell. And then once you get that link set up, you can then drag it down the whole spreadsheet so that the one below it watches the one below it on the other spreadsheet. Awesome, and it, thank you. You're welcome. And it doesn't have to be the exact same, like I did the same table in both spreadsheets. This one could look totally different, but you could still tell it which cell to reference in that first spreadsheet. So once we get rolling this year, if you want me to come over and I can help you with yours, then that would, I am definitely happy to do that. And then it will be a little bit smoother too, this performance pressure. <laughs> I can't believe it's 10 of already. I feel like I've taught you nothing. Um, questions? Was there something you were hoping you were going to come in here and I was going to enlighten you on? Because I could teach a full day about spreadsheets. Trying to do it in 50 minutes is 
plus having a mess up of a video for 47 of those 50 minutes didn't help. Thank you. I would be using it. I used it a lot as a teacher, whether I was keeping track of, um, oh, we talked about attendance. I would consider doing it for attendance. It would become quite the large spreadsheet over time, although you could have different tabs for each week. You could connect it to a um, Google form, just like the one we fill out every day is going into a Google sheet and then they're able to sort it by name or sort it by day or sort it by building because that's the data that we're all putting in every day when we fill in our attendance. So if you think along those same lines, um, a Google form probably isn't what you want to be using for your students to be able to assign themselves in. It's just like, you know, doing attendance in your classroom. They might move their little magnet or do something to show their attendance in the classroom. But ultimately, ultimately it's the teacher who's making sure they're there or not. But for your own organization, you could create one that has your list of students down the left and your dates across the top. And then you could put in your, you know, presence present, tardy, absent, whatever you want to put in there to keep track of it, if that makes it easier. Or, um, or you could just pull up your power school in front of you while you are taking attendance like you might do in a normal classroom setting anyway, knowing that once you've entered it into power school, it's in there and then you don't have to worry about having it in two places. So it's, it's, that's something that I think we'll learn more about as we start doing it and we'll share some better practices some from the, the people who are doing it and someone might say, oh, I do it this way or I do it that way. And we'll be like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of that. So I think that will be helpful. Some of it you just can't figure out till we have live kids here, you know? Susie, Chris, I don't know if Christy Mayer's on this. She had said yesterday she had read some people were using it. Um, she was thinking of starting with one or two students, but um, using a Google form as a teacher resource to log, like ask questions about whether your students are hitting their objectives, and then it would chart it for you, like you said, it would graph it for you. So you could word your Google form to hit your, to say yes, they got eight out of 10 today, six out of 10 yesterday, and then at the end of, when it's time for progress notes, you'd have a whole, the data would be collected. Yep. It's ambitious, but it's a, it's a really good resource. <laughs> exactly, once you're done and you have the data in a spreadsheet, like it's so useful, it's so useful. Right. And then if you have to make a chart for a parent or for whatever to be able to show progress, then it's, it's much easier to be able to do so. A lot right. of teachers will use Google Forms as they're walking around, like as you, we can't walk around as much, but um, it's not always, a Google form is not always for other people to fill in for you. Sometimes it's for you to fill in for you. Right, I had never thought of it that way, right? I always think it's giving it to someone, but if it just becomes the way I answer my own questions at the end of the day, did I do? <laughs> yes. That was all Christy Mayer, that was not me, but I thought it was a great idea. It is a great idea. Our team is gonna use it to track parent communication too. So like you track who you emailed, student name, how many times you, like you reached out and then we can search for like certain students the same way you did to um, sort it. Love that. Yeah, you'll start to see trends. You'll start to see, you'll start to see all kinds of stuff. Spreadsheets are pretty powerful um, to be able to show change over time or stagnancy over time. <laughs> Absolutely. Any other comments, questions, connections? Anybody wanna sing? So like I said, I love spreadsheets, like I love them. And so maybe that's why I was so scattered today, just uh, wanna share it all, but it, there's just not enough time to do it in this, in this short venue. But I work here all year long. So anytime you wanna sit down and have, you know, coffee and a spreadsheet, happy to do so. Um, if it's something that I either haven't learned or have forgotten, I will reteach or relearn it um, to myself so that I can help you because it's just something that I feel is a huge valuable tool and it helps teachers um, be more effective and to use your time in a, in a way that is efficient too, because every minute is gonna count. All right, let me hit stop on the, rear, on the record. Um, pause, share, no. See, that's what I was looking for before. I was looking for pause, share. Do you know what I just did when I, did it, I don't even know if I'm still recording. I am recording. 